Hi everybody, we are back for the third trimester update. I am 35 weeks today, so obviously not the end of my third trimester, um, but we're getting close, so I'm going to go ahead and make the video. I will probably make a video talking about how labor went and everything. Um, again, this is for friends, family who wants to keep up and kind of be involved, but also anyone who might need some help, um, particularly with anxiety. I know that I was looking for that throughout, you know, preparing for pregnancy and everything. So <clears throat> first, I'll show you my belly. I am wearing shorts under this dress. This dress makes me look pretty large. There it is. Pretty honking. That belly button is completely flipped out now. So far, no stretch marks, but I know that they can show up at the last minute. Right now he is head down, thankfully, and his arms and hands are on this side and his back is on this side. And I can definitely tell because I feel his hiccups right here where his like back and lungs are. And I feel his little peats and his little hands and he kicks me in the ribs. And uh, it's pretty fascinating when I suck in. <sighs> pretty wild. I wanted to show you a contraction. I'm contracting currently. So when I suck in, you'll see. It's very hard. Uh, very firm, very strong organ. Wild. So one of the first things I'll talk about is acid reflux. It's a definitely a big part of the third trimester. I don't really have any special tips on that, you know, eat your Tums, take your reducers that are safe for pregnancy and uh, avoid foods that are causing it. For me, peanut butter triggers it. And I freaking love peanut butter. So it's very sad, but it waxes and it wanes. Um, and then <clears throat> one thing that I've really been experiencing is Braxton Hicks contractions. And I talked about that a little bit in my last video because they started in my second trimester. And um, here recently in the last like week or so, they've been getting a lot stronger and longer and honestly kind of painful. I am not a doctor. Always talk to your doctor first. <clears throat> but my doctor told me, yeah, they can be pretty uncomfortable. So that can be normal. Some women describe them as feeling like period cramps. Um, you just want to keep an eye on the, the frequency and, and really the intensity of it. So although mine are getting stronger, for sure, they're still not in the frequency that's making me think that it's preterm labor. So my doctor also told me that anything before 37 weeks, I go into the hospital and we try to stop labor if it's happening early. Um, anything 37 and after, I can do what I want. I can labor at home. I can, you know, obviously follow guidelines and stuff. So I'm 35 now and I'm like, please give me two more weeks, two more weeks. And then it's go time. And then I'm ready. And then I'm excited, but I'm really hoping I don't have to go into the hospital and get turbed, which is given tributylene, which stops your contractions. But anyway, um, some tips on that. Um, you want to keep your bladder empty and stay very hydrated. Number one cause of Braxton Hicks is dehydration. And um, it, it's kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't type situation. Because when you're drinking more water, you're peeing more. So sometimes I would kind of live on the toilet for about 30 minutes and just drink, drink, drink and pee, pee, pee. So that sucks, but... Pregnancy is kind of torture. Another thing to keep me hydrated, if I'm like, I feel like I might be quite dehydrated, then I'll drink a liquid IV. Um, these, they're, they're kind of expensive. I really like that strawberry flavor. To me, it tastes like a baby bottle pop. And if I'm like kind of dehydrated, and I think I might, you know, benefit from a little boost, I use a Propel because they're cheaper for sure. So... But still getting some extra electrolytes so that you can hold on to that water a little better. And I also like to lay down on a heating pad. Of course, make sure it's not too hot. Talk to your doctor. But the heating pad really helps kind of soothe my muscles. Because if my muscles are overstrained, then that kind of triggers it too. 
position changes as well. Sometimes my body will just contract a whole bunch if I'm laying on one side and then I go to the other and then it's kind of fine. So trial and error, just figure out what works for you um, because what may work one day may not work the next day. Like moving around a bunch and laying around a bunch. Sometimes when I'm laying around, I contract more than if I'm up and kind of moving. And sometimes it's the opposite. So bodies are weird. Um, another thing you want to do is make sure that your bowels are regular because when I have constipation and gas pains, that extra pressure really kind of irritates my uterus and makes it contract extra. And it's just, it's not a good time. So I have actually been taking um, a uh, stool softener every day in this last trimester. And that's been helping me stay on kind of a steady path. Um, if I need a little extra boost, I will have a prune in the morning. Just one. You be careful with those prunes, I'm telling you. I've also started my non-stress test. So what they do with that, they're going to do a scan. So they're going to check to make sure that I have enough fluid. Um, so far, so good. It's been great. And um, the non-stress test, they're going to hook you up to two monitors, one for the baby's heart rate and another for um, contractions. They're looking for something specific. Don't quote me, but I believe it is um, an acceleration, two accelerations from their baseline that is 15 beats per minute or higher, lasting 15 seconds or longer. That's what they're looking for. They just want to see how baby's heart rate is reacting. And uh, again, so far so good. And to help with that, you know, you want baby not to be asleep. You want baby to be active so that their heart rate actually changes. And I like to drink this raspberry lemonade from Walmart. It's a dollar. It's really tasty. And Petey Boy seems to like it. What's funny is I had my non-stress test one day and then I went for the scan and I literally watched this little boy stick out his tongue and lick the placenta. Super strange, but they say that the things that you eat um, can kind of flavor the amniotic fluid. So maybe he just really liked the lemonade. Yeah, it was kind of weird, but it was it was hilarious too. I, too bad I didn't get a video of it because usually they send me videos, but that's the one time that they didn't send me videos. So um, on Valentine's Day, Andrew and I got a stomach bug and it was horrendous. It, oh my gosh, getting a stomach bug really sucks, but getting a stomach bug while pregnant is a whole new level of suck um, because you're worried. You're worried that you're dehydrated and that can really cause a bunch of issues. You're worried that baby's not getting the nutrients. You're going to survive. It's going to be fine. Um, I was actually a lot more calm than I thought I was going to be throughout the process. And I think it's mostly because Andrew was going through it at the same time as me. He was like an hour or two ahead of me, actually. So I was following his pattern. Um, but I wasn't alone with it. We were both up all night puking and the other end. It was, it was torture. But this child... <laughs> was wiggling the whole damn time. And usually I love his little kicks and everything, but oh my gosh, when you are nauseous and feeling really disgusting, those extra movements make you extra nauseous. But I was just really glad to know that he's still okay. He's still having a good time in there. And obviously, you know, I was quite dehydrated. And I was kind of concerned that I might need to go into the the hospital to get an IV to rehydrate quickly. But I called the triage and she said, you know, usually you're as you're dehydrated for as long as you are puking. So if you're puking for 24 hours, if it doesn't get better in 24 hours, then, you know, you might want to kind of come in and reassess. But I was able to rehydrate myself. So, you know, if you know me, you know that like getting sick like that is a huge trigger for my anxiety. So I was really surprised that I was okay through it but it hit after. Afterwards is when I started kind of panicking and feeling really scared about like if I felt like that again or um, I don't know. I don't know. I just had a really big anxiety peak and it was, I think that it was mostly because uh, that was the week prior to my sister's wedding 
which was on a Tuesday. We got sick on a Monday night. So then the next week, Tuesday was my sister's wedding and I had pretty much all the decorations for it at my house and I had to make the cake and cupcakes. So I really, really feel that being dependable is something that I want to be known for. So that, that was kind of hard, a little hard for me. Um, and then also traveling and going to events that triggers my anxiety as well. So that was coming up. And then after the wedding on Tuesday, Saturday was my baby shower. So I was trying to kind of negotiate with myself. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut it back to like two hours. Okay, I'm gonna do a drive-by or I'll cancel it and I'll do an online thing. Um, and I was advised to not do that, to just get through the wedding and then see how I feel because this may be my only chance to ever have a baby shower. I don't know if I'm gonna have another kid. Um, and I don't wanna regret, you know, changing things that way. So it went okay. Everything worked out. I got everything done um, the way that it was meant to go. The baby shower was excellent. It was relaxed. I loved it. Um, thank you everybody who came. So then let's move on to talk about back pain. Um, I have some weird pinched nerve mumbo jumbo happening in my sacral area. Um, and what helps me, what I have noticed is that it gets worse if I have cracked my back recently. And, uh, I crack my back all the time. I just, ever since I was like 10 years old, I have cracked my back every day, multiple times a day. So one thing that I have learned is that cracking your joints is not necessarily a bad thing. Don't quote me, I'm not a doctor. But what makes it bad is when you move your body in a way that is unnatural. So my biggest advice is if you're going to crack your back or crack anything, only go in the natural parameters. So if I'm twisting to crack my back, I am not gonna go very far. I'm just going to go to what feels natural. I'm not pulling any farther than what feels natural. And that has really, really helped. Honestly, I've had fewer episodes of um, the, the pain. And also, go very slow, especially if you're twisting to crack your back, because those round ligaments, they will freak out if you move too quickly. Speaking of which, when your round ligaments go crazy, um, laying horizontal helps me sometimes. I'm very fortunate. Sometimes I'm able to work from bed. So some days I will just give myself a rest and work from bed. Um, again, keep your bowels regular because that pressure on those ligaments can do some damage. Uh, a heating pad, warm up those ligaments. That helps me. And uh, you know, this sounds kind of like common sense, but sometimes that escapes me. Don't jump. Don't jump very hard when you're pregnant. Um, I was kind of standing on something a little tall, not super tall. And I was like, oh yeah, I could jump. That's not far. I'm not going to fall or anything. But you don't realize the weight that you have in front of you. So when you jump, that weight goes like that. And it really hurts those round ligaments. So just, just don't do that. And you'll be fine. Um, one weird thing that has been happening with me is leg ligament pain. So the ligament that connects my, um, my femur to my pubic bone, you know, on, on the inside of your leg, somehow he hits like a nerve path that sends shooting pain down that ligament. And it feels so strange and I don't know how the hell he's doing it, but it really freaking hurts. And then he also somehow like nuzzles his head or his hands along another nerve path that sends shooting pain down my urethra. Pregnancy is wonderful. It's torture. It's pure torture. So another third trimester thing is it starts to get hard to breathe. Um, <clears throat> I would say sit back so you have as much lung room as possible. Um, sometimes laying on your side is actually better than like laying back because that kind of compresses your lungs, especially depending on how big your breasts are. Mine are very big, so it doesn't really do that. But sometimes laying on my side allows more room for my lungs to expand. 
Um, and then sometimes when I'm in bed, if it's really bad, I have to like put my arm back. I have to lay like with my arms out and like that to actually kind of feel like I have some room in my lungs. And then another position that helps me sometimes if I do my hands and knees, you know, the cat cow position, that'll kind of let the baby have some room down below and give my lungs some room to expand. Another thing that I would suggest having is a blood pressure cuff at home. You can get like an automated one from Amazon for pretty darn cheap. Um, you know, of course you wanna make sure that it's accurate, but the thing is, is even if it's like 10 off, you can find a pattern. That's the thing, is you wanna know if it's starting to spike and you need to like go get checked. Um, you know, if you check it every day at home, you know, okay, it's generally around this area. So you can detect any changes. I would highly suggest that. And then also as far as movement goes, like baby movement, you should be kick counting. Um, I am not a doctor, do not follow my advice, do not follow me, but personally, I haven't really had to kick count because this kid is nuts. This kid really like, he moves a lot. And I thought that I would be overwhelmed by the movement when I you know, was first starting pregnancy or thinking about getting pregnant. I was really nervous about how I would feel about having that movement in my belly because I'm a very sensitive person. And honestly, it's, it doesn't bother me. I mean, when he kicks me in the ribs and like sends some pain down my urethra, that bothers me, but it doesn't bother me in a way that triggers my anxiety. That's the important thing. Getting ready for labor, I would say my best advice is to manage your expectations. Obviously I haven't done it yet, but um, you know, most people who know me and know like past me know that I'm like a control freak and I freak out if I don't have control. This is something I cannot control. And I have had to do a lot of work to understand that and to be okay with letting go of control. Manage your expectations. You can have your preferences and your plans. You know, I want an epidural, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want it to go this way. Manage your expectations. You aren't in control of anything. It's going to happen how it's going to happen. And the bottom line is you are going to be in good hands. You're going to be safe, it's going to be fine. And, um, you know, I can worry about all the things that are gonna, like, could go wrong, but that is not going to do me any lick of good. So I am going to assume that it's going to be calm and peaceful and it's going to be okay. And if something goes wrong, we'll deal with it. We will process it in the moment and it will happen, it'll be fine. Um, one thing is I'm going to have my sister-in-law come depending on how things go, because if things go really fast, she'll meet us at the hospital. If things go really slow and I'm kind of laboring at home, our plan is for her to come here and be with us and hang out with us. And I think mostly because I need to be told what I see is normal. What is happening looks normal to me. My sister-in-law has done this five times and she has had unmedicated births. And the last time that she did this was a year ago which is why she's, she's gonna be a really great asset in all of this. Um, she might be watching this right now. Hi, I love you. But anyway, so um, yeah, that's kind of my focus. I think that I'm more worried about things not being normal. But even then, I know that there are interventions and it'll be fine. We have our bags packed. They are right there. And then the diaper bag is right there. And I have my list of last minute things to grab right there. Right there is a labor gown that I am going to put on probably while I'm laboring at home, just to get ready. And then a robe. And this is like an old robe because I know that things are gonna get a little dirty. But I found this dress on Amazon and I don't really care for the pattern, but they didn't have any other patterns. The reason why I bought it is one, it has this pedal front that opens. And then two, it has a little cinch right here. And I'm a small lady, so I, I'd like to not be wearing a big garbage bag. So that kind of makes it nice and tailored. And then it has these zips on either side so I can do the, the skin to skin. And I like zips as opposed to clasps because when I'm tired, 
I'm not gonna wanna try to find each button. And then on the back, of course, for any labor dress, you're gonna need the buttons. But this one has 12 buttons. Not like four, my butt's not gonna be hanging out. 12 buttons, so I feel nice and secure with that. And then I also made this sign for when we come home because I love my neighbors and I want them to know when he arrives. My main goal is to be excited when I go into labor and not scared. It's not a scary thing, it's an exciting thing. So let's talk about Zeppelin, my dog. Um, I have a pretty much all the baby gear all set up, so she is plenty familiar with baby gear. That's not gonna be a shock to her. Um, my plan is to have my parents um, sleep overnight with her so she's not alone because that would kind of be a bit of a shock too. She's never actually spent the night alone. And um, I plan to send home a blanket before we come home for her to smell the baby scent before we come home. And um, we also have a bark collar on her right now. Now, I don't have the shock on there. She doesn't need the shock. It just beeps every time she barks and then it vibrates. And that is enough for her to not bark anymore. And that's been really great because she kind of was a barker. She would bark a lot. And that was not going to work with a baby. So if you'd like, I can link to that. So let's talk about um, what I'm going to do for maternity leave and for work. Um, I am a revenue cycle specialist. I do medical billing and coding type stuff. So I can do that from home. My employers are kind enough to tell me that they're moms too and they get it. So they are totally okay with me having baby with me while I'm working, which is going to save us a ton of money and it's going to be great. Um, hopefully he's cooperative and he isn't a fussy baby and lets me work. Um, I am going to do about six weeks of leave and I think that that will be good to kind of figure out momhood, hopefully establish a bit of a sleeping pattern. And um, when I come back, I will still be part-time. My plan is to do five days a week, but only five hours a day. So small little bursts. And I think that that will help me kind of maintain a schedule and balance things a little better. Okay, so next I wanted to show you how I get out of bed. And I have a pregnancy pillow, which I have shown this in videos before, and I love it. I love, love, love it. Um, a lot of people say it's not necessary. You could just prop your pillows around you, but ultimately this saves me bed space because these are thinner than like actual um, pillows. So I'm gonna lay down as if I'm sleeping. I'm gonna tuck my arm over here. And I love it because I can push this up to my back and it'll support my back. And then I put this between my legs and then I can even pull the back arm up here and it'll cradle me like that. Now getting out of bed is hard when you're pregnant. So what I like about this one is it has this little kind of extender. This is kind of actually for your arm so you can lay like that, but I toss this over the edge of the bed so that I can kind of just toss my legs over and sometimes I'll just kind of roll like that. I'll let gravity take me. And then that's how I get out of bed. And it's great. I also wanted to share how I remember my medications. Now I'm not the best at this, but I keep my water bottle right there and then my medications right here. And then I just make up little rules with myself. So, before I move my water bottle in the morning, I take my medications. So it's kind of connected to another thing. I don't, won't move my water bottle out of that area until I've taken my medications. Now I'm gonna do a little nursery and house tour. Things are probably going to get rearranged again because I'm obsessed with rearranging things. It's cheaper than buying new things. So yeah, here's what things look like right now. I'm gonna do this on wide view, so it's a little easier to see. Here's Peter's room. There's a diaper pail. His, Andrew's grandma made this blanket. She started when he was about to be born and finished it for Peter. So it's already an heirloom. His mom gave me this precious picture that made me cry. There's some decorations there. We may sand this and stain it to match everything, but I have toys in here. 
some decorations, some charts, and then this is kind of my nursing station right here. So those are size one diapers. I just didn't really know where else to put them. I have a monitor, a very basic monitor, a sound machine. This thing is amazing. It's a Cincy wax warmer, but it's Hogwarts. Speaking of which, I have the books, pretty stuff. I have the Hakka hand sanitizer, nipple balm, wipes, burp rags, some washcloths, some nipple pads, and then my pump is right over here, ready to go. I have some books so that I can sit here and read to him. This thing is super sweet. This thing is actually supposed to hold a pacifier with this clip right here, but I thought it was supposed to hold on to the crib. And it says Peter. My little sister gave me that. And yes, I know if baby sleeps in here, there will be nothing in the crib. And I made this, and I made that, and I made that, and my best friend gave me that. Super cute. And then there's gonna be a painting of Hogwarts right here, but it has yet to come. And a dresser with all kinds of stuff in it. I'm sure you don't really care. And I have loads of clothes. I saw this hack on Pinterest to hang all your onesies like that. And it's separated. I found those online as a printable. Made those. I have bath towels, wash rags, and laundry. This is a work in progress, but yeah. And then some clothes, other sizes, all kinds of stuff. So that's the nursery. Now let's talk about my room and this is probably going to change here i have a nice rolling cart i have changing stuff burping stuff swaddles extra clothes <clears throat> nipple balm lotion breast pads gripe water this is a pacifier thermometer i have a regular one over there too i have extra water bottles because i hear breastfeeding makes you thirsty and then this is a nasal aspirator and then this thing is a little toy and then i have this bassinet here so my plan is, we'll see where this bassinet ends up. I don't know. But then I have this changing pad. I'm probably just going to kind of leave right there. And then when I need it, I'll plop it right here. And I'll change them on the bed. And I'll just plop it right down. And then in our bathroom, I have my postpartum box. My tux, my dermaplast, my peri bottle, pads, 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 and diapers. In the office, I have... A pack and play and I don't know what I'm gonna want when he comes but there's a nice changing pad here there is a nice bassinet there again I know when he sleeps in there there will not be anything in there and changing stuff and I know this is really 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 extra but I have another pack and play in the living room this blanket obviously isn't gonna be in there and I've been having Andrew practice swaddling with dolls so there's a changing pad and then another changing station. I have 18 freezer meals ready. And I think it's safe to say that we are pretty much ready for this baby. We just are waiting for him to come and finish cooking. Please, Petey boy, give me at least two more weeks to hit 37 weeks. But uh, yep, that's my third trimester update. See ya.